Good morning. Thank you very much, Dr. LaBianca, and let me thank the organizer for this kind invitation. So we all know that uh, the monoclonal antibody are an example of a positive uh, treatment, a successful treatment in metastatic colorectal cancer, but EGF receptor can also be blocked by the uh, drugs that act on intracell intracellular uh, pathway. For example, farnesyl transferase inhibitor that blocks RAF protein were no longer investigated in the colorectal cancer as the clinical trial were negative, and BRAF and MEC can, uh, can uh, be considered as a potential target for metastatic colorectal cancer. You know that BRAF is mutated in the 7% of solid tumor and in particular in 60-18% in melanoma tumors and in the 10% of colorectal cancer. A BRAF mutant patient display histopathological characteristic. Uh, they were more present in women in the rat colon and are associated uh, with the microsatellite instability. Uh, BRAF also can be considered as a prognostic factor and non predictive when you use an anti EGF receptor drug, as you can see in the curve. Uh, BRAF mutant patients still benefit from an anti EGF receptor therapy. And uh, pa several pan uh, BRAF inhibitor has been developed, sorafenib and regorafenib in colorectal cancer, regorafenib, and we have also selective inhibitors of BRAF, like verumorafenib. But when remurafenib is used in melanoma patient, it, uh, it gives us a very impressive response rate of about 60%. But when you use vemurafenib in colorectal cancer, as you can see in this slide, the response rate is only of 5%, as demonstrated in this phase two trial by COPETS. So we have to understand why a colorectal cancer BRAF mutant uh, patient do not respond to regorafenib. An answer came from the lab, from these uh, preclinical models, and Fallard and colleague clearly demonstrated that when you use uh, vemorafenib in a um, BRAF mutant colorectal cancer cell, there is an upper regulation of the EGF receptor pathway. As you can see, the phospho EGF receptor is activi activated and present. So the best uh, strategy to block this, uh, um, this uh, uh, survival signal is to use vemorafenib in combination with uh, cetuximab or with gefitinib. And this was clearly demonstrated in the in vitro models, but also in the in vivo model. As you can see, the blue line represents the combination therapy of uh, vemorafenib plus cetuximab. And based on this inside, uh, three clinical trials are currently recruited in patients and are based on the combination of cetuximab plus vemurafenib and uh, panitumumab plus binraf and MEK inhibitors. There is also another preclinical model that explains why BRAF inhibitors are not uh, um, useful uh, alone in metastatic colorectal cancer. Uh, the ADRON demonstrated that when you use a BRAF inhibitor, you have an heterodimerization between BRAF and CRAF, and upon the uh, activated stimuli of the muted RAS, there is a uh, stimulation of MEC and a downstream phosphoerc. And if you want to block these two pathways, this hyperactivation of, uh, of the pathway, you have to use two inhibitors to achieve a res positive results. And this was uh, a clinical applied by uh, Dr. Corcrane, and this year at the ASCO meeting, this study has been uh, presented. Uh, they used the combination of BRAF, of the, the BRAF inhibitor, which is a BRAF inhibitor with a, a trimetinib, a MEC inhibitor, in BRAF valine 600 mutant colorectal cancer patient. You can see the safety profile. Uh, the major adverse event was represented by pyrexia and no retinal events, which is a typical uh, toxicity of MEK inhibitor, was reported. And this is the efficacy result. Uh, if you remember the COPETS curve, this is quite different. Uh, now we have an um, unconfirmed response rate of 11% and a minor response of uh, uh, 22%. So the combination seems to be active in this population. 
And when you see the pharmacodynamic uh, biomarker, they found uh, a reduction in the level of phosphomap kinases in six uh, period biopsies obtained after treatment. So uh, phosphomap could uh, represent a potential biomarker in this setting, but uh, uh, the inhibition was not so robust as expected when you use two inhibitors. They also made uh, the evaluation, uh, the immunohistochemistry evaluation of the expression of microsatellite instability and EGF receptor. And as you can see, it seems that in their population, the microsatellite instability and uh, low expression of EGF receptor could be associated with a better outcomes. The other target that I'm going to review uh, today is MEC. MEC is important because it's a crucial point and uh, on MEC, uh, a lot of growth factor uh, converge for their signaling. These are the MEC inhibitors clinically uh, undergoing clinical trials. As you can see, they are very selective on the, on the target. Only two studies in phase three trial has been uh, validated the activity of MEC in melanoma patient. And so far, no MEC inhibitor has been entered into the clinical use for colorectal cancer. These are the toxicity of the different several uh, different MEC inhibitors, and as you can see here, there are some toxicity like the the the, the targeted the, the tyrosine kinase inhibitor, like rash, like diarrhea and fatigue, but they also have a um, particular uh, class specific toxicity like bladder vision and retinal vein occlusion. This is one example of the MEC inhibitor trial. This is the Bay from, uh, from Bayer. This is a phase one trial evaluating the activity in 53 patients. And as you can see, uh, there is some sign of activity in colorectal patient. One patient with colorectal cancer achieved a partial response. And the pharmacodynamic study demonstrated that phosphomap, uh, phosphomap kinases was reduced in patients with KRAS and BRAF mutation. On the contrary, patient with no mutation, there was no registered um, reduction in phosphomap kinesis. But when you translated this finding on a, on a bigger trial with a larger number of patients, like was done with the selumetinib trial, the only modest activity was reported with this agent, and there was no patient selection. So I think that we have to find the possible tumor likely to respond to MEK inhibitor, and also in this case, the preclinical model helped us. And if you can see, it seems that MEK inhibitors are more sensitive in cells with BRAF and RAF mutation, and the mutation in p 3 kinase confer a resistance to MEK inhibitors. But perhaps if you use a gene expression profile, uh, this is a, the, best, uh, the, be the best model to predict the resistance or the sensitivity to the MEK inhibitors. And so if you are so um, smart or so um, good enough to select the patient, we can uh, also have a positive results with MEK inhibitor, as uh, was happening in uh, non-small cell lung cancer, Keras mutant, in which a MEK inhibitor, selumetinib was uh, uh, plus docetaxel improved uh, the progression free survival in this population. So I think that we have to come back to the lab and to understand which are uh, the, the, which are the, 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 the target and which is the rational approach for targeted therapy. And we did this preclinical work using a MEK inhibitor pimazertib. We tested it in a colorectal cancer cell, and uh, we found in a resistant cell that uh, gene expression profile revealed five core genes upregulated versus sensitive cell, and uh, the, the upregulated genes are the one in yellow, and all these genes, when are upregulated, activated the two, uh, the two signaling pathways, the RAS, RAF, MEC, and MAC kinase pathway, and the PHV kinase, AKT, mTOR pathway. So we, this was the rationale for combining treatment with MEC inhibitors. We made the, uh, a lot of a combination of pimacertib plus everolimus, plus PHV kinase inhibitor, plus sorafenib, plus regorafenib. And as you can see, uh, we obtained a synergistic effect in resistant cell to pimazertib, both in vitro and in, the in, vivo, in vivo models. And uh, uh, many clinical trials are currently recruiting patients in solid tumors using combination of MEC with BRAF inhibitor and with chemotherapy. 
but uh, there is a, uh, also an open question regarding MEK inhibitor. Obviously, the studies are in uh, early phases, so we can make uh, any conclusion now. There are uh, overlapping toxicity that we have to consider when we use the MEK inhibitor and the PHK inhibitor and AKT inhibitor, such as the, the rash and the stomatitis. And also, we need to find the pharmacodynamic markers of activity. The last, uh, the last target I'm going to review is MET. You know that MET is a cell membrane growth factor receptor tyrosine kinases. Its ligand is the hepatocyte growth factor. MEC, uh, MET is an, has an oncogenic role in colorectal cancer. Its high expression is associated with uh, poor survival and distal metastasis. Moreover, MET has been found amplified in uh, gefitinib and erlotinib resistant and osmocellular cell lung cancer and to cetuximab and panitumumab colorectal cancer. So MET is a good target to, 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 to eat and to block. And this has been made in this uh, uh, trial presented this year at the ASCO and uh, in which Tivantinib, which is a, a MET inhibitor, was combined with cetuximab and arinotecan in a second line metastatic colorectal cancer. 150 patients were randomized and received this treatment. And these are the results. As you can see, progression-free survival, which was the primary endpoint, and overall survival and response rate trended to favor the Tivantinib arms, but not in statistical way. And if you see the pharmacodynamic results, any conclusive result can be made they only found that uh, the serum level of uh, the ligand of MET, the HGF, could be uh, a prognostic marker in patients with uh, low levels. So uh, how we can explain this un unsuccessful study? And uh, I think that the question arises, did MET inhibition arrive in the right moment? And in my opinion, no, because if you consider this preclinical model, and this study made by Dr. Bardelli, MET was found amplified in patients who were treated with the anti-EGF drug. So the right moment, in my opinion, to use a MET inhibitor in combination with an EGF receptor inhibitor is when you have had a quadri-resistant to anti-EGF drug. And, uh, and we also have demonstrated, Dr. Troiani showed you before, that MET is a late event, and is, this is an, another confirmation that uh, it is activated in resistant cells to cetuximab. And another question, uh, when I'm thinking about the pharmacodynamic study and the, the unsuccessful result that uh, they obtained with Tivantinib, is, this, is Tivantinib a real MET inhibitor? I don't think so, and this has been clearly demonstrated by uh, Dr. Bardelli again and their group, their active group. They found that Tivantinib act like a cyto cytotoxic drug rather than a MET inhibitor, and this is something that we have taken account when we design uh, clinical trial in which there is a pharmacodynamic endpoint and we have a targeted drug. So these are my conclusions. We have made a lot of develop, develop, development and, and a positive result in metastatic colorectal cancer. It is very important to find a predictive biomarker. It's very important to have, as Dr. Troiani said before, important uh, preclinical models that predict, especially with the target agents, the response. And it is important to, 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 de to define the optimal strategy. And uh, this is the, what we call the personalized medicine that is a long and tortuous way. And I think that in the future, we are young and we have taken in consideration this, uh, uh, this model that uh, Scott Cobb has presented this, year's, um, this year at the ASCO meeting, in which he will, uh, if we use a genomic profile, we will predict the right drug for the right patient, sparing unuseless drugs and unuseless toxicity for the patient. Thank you.